All right, Paul, we had you for three months with you. Stunning, stunning time. And we thought, hey, before you head off, go to Sweden, um, go to the Northern Hemisphere. We wanted to pick your brain and wanted to see, hey, the man has, has all the answers. Let's get it on tape, let's get it recorded. All right, here we go. So we, you know, we need a, we need a bioeconomy, we need a circular economy in the world. Why do we need a circular bioeconomy in New Zealand? And we as an export uh, driven nation, how would that give us a competitive edge, competitive advantage? Okay, so first you may be surprised how little there is in there, uh, but um, uh, uh, I think it's important to go back to the definitions for a circular bioeconomy because it means so many things to so many people. Yes. Uh, so it comes from circular economy, and that's sort of the master, and bioeconomy, which is the slave. So circular economy, <clears throat> we'll come back to that, but it, you have the idea of it, things going around. And bioeconomy, but it's because it's based out of biomass. Yes. So the circular bioeconomy is the marriage of those two things. Um, and so what does that really mean? So the master is uh, the circular economy, mm -hmm. and as you know well, as a good friend of uh, Sion uh, in the past, the Alan MacArthur Foundation is sort of the reference yep. uh, in that, and they talk to it as being a, um, a systems framework. Yes. And that's really a very eloquent, I think. Mm -hmm. um, it's about how we take parts of society or a value chain or something like that, mm -hmm and look at it as a system and use stuff again and around and around. Um, and then the circular bioeconomy should go beyond that, and I think it does. Uh, and the idea that we're gonna use biomass to do yes. that. Uh, so if you look at a circular economy, it's been about single-use plastics. Yep. That has a lot to do with the mm -hmm. circular bioeconomy, and we've seen, uh, we're taking our bags yep. now to get our groceries and our straws. They collapse too fast maybe, but they're not made uh, out of plastic like they used to be. So we can see that where there's policy, which is the first place we've seen policy mm -hmm. in circular economies there, we can see that there's action. Mm -hmm. So the thing about circular economies so far is that's really the only policy to drive it yep. forward. And there's no policy, these things are really difficult. Now, circular bioeconomy, that enhancement. <clears throat> I think you're seeing today that uh, people engaged with the forestry and biomass, mm -hmm. they get that because of this thing called the circular bioeconomy. They're getting uh, that they really need to think about these principles as they do their bioeconomy. So the bioeconomy to the forest sector uh, is transforming the industry and the circular bioeconomy is doing it in the right way. So maybe we shouldn't put lignin into a polymer that might not biodegrade Absolutely. or be recyclable and, and stuff like that. That may sound obvious, but I don't think it was if you go back yep. uh, at the beginning. And so why why is it so important for New Zealand? Well, um, I, th I think it's uh, terribly important for, so I'm gonna get two answers. Why is it important for Scion, and then why is it important for New Zealand? And they're kind of related. Sure. It's perfect for Scion, because Scion has the, the two parts to them. One is, you know, make the most out of the forest industry. Yep. And the other one is, do that with all the social conscience and environmental conscience that, mm -hmm. with which it should be done. It's a CRI. Yeah. So it's, it's a perfect idea mm -hmm. for science. Now, the manifestation of that as an export economy, that's a complicated question because of yeah. the general definitions that yeah. we've just gone through. Um, and I would guess it is. And you might um, say, what's the right bioeconomy mm -hmm. for New Zealand? I don't pretend to know that answer, but many of them have to do with how can we export? Yes. That means, I think, how do we add value? Yes. The thing about the circular economy is, you know, you've got this high credibility, you've got the, the, the Kiwi brand, yeah. and you want to export with the Kiwi brand and go with that. Yeah. Well, that's added value, that's something that's green, and it's got to be circular. And at the same time, it's not obvious, trees don't walk. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't pump them, they're mm -hmm. very expensive. Yeah. So the solution of, um, it's consistent, both for export, and what's good for New Zealand and for yeah. trees that are expensive and have a different economies of scale than petroleum, mm -hmm. we now think of added value. We begin to think of attributes of products that can be mm -hmm. cycled and the idea that you're exporting mm -hmm. this good product to the rest of the world, as well as the domestic market, I wanna say. Yep. 
and like like all the things we want to have it yesterday yes of course obviously and we want to have it as cheaply and as quickly and as as, as, as good as possible so what in new zealand can we do now learning from the world learning from the best to make that happen as, as fast as we can try really hard uh, I would say that, uh, uh, you know, on a global benchmark, it's emerging. The bioeconomy is now a few percent of the GDP in Europe. Yeah. I think that's not trivial. That's a really, it's, it's big. Yeah. It is nowhere else in the world. Uh, so we can't say it's in place and New Zealand's catching up. New Zealand is, is doing really well. And I would yeah. say it's fertile for the mm -hmm. circular bioeconomy and all the good things that go with it. Um, I think what's the element that needs to be identified is uh, how do we have a competitive advantage as New Zealand that yeah. others don't have? How do I import, which I think, yeah. uh, I've been so impressed at Cyan, how you want the best in class around globally, mm -hmm. around the world, and then you adapt it for that mm -hmm. New Zealand context. And I think if you're gonna make that work, you want to, it's a truly innovative process to use technologies everywhere adapt them for your case mm -hmm. and adapt them for the New Zealand society's need yeah. and I think that's what's happening and I think you touched on, on, on one thing there this this identifying and and working with others so coming to the topic of partnerships in that in that whole being successful what a big role or how big is the role of partnerships of relationships of, of co-innovation in that in that area uh, it's essential and it's huge, uh, yeah. uh, clearly. Um, if it was easy, somebody would be really rich and would have everything under control, but it's not that way. So collaboration means so many things. It means collaboration for financials. It means collaboration across yeah. the value chain. It means collaboration on the innovation chain. I mean, yeah. And all of these are necessary. Yes. Uh, and, um, and that comes to the idea of uh, the business and innovation ecosystem that uh, uh, that I've introduced uh, on a few occasions and chatted about, I think it's right for New Zealand. Yeah. That we don't have 10 of everything in New Zealand. Yeah. We have to take the best we have and pull it together. And the idea of a business and innovation ecosystem is you have the value chain players or potential value chain players, yeah. and then you're gonna serve them legally, um, advocacy to government, um, access to support for the bioeconomy, mm -hmm. which is absolutely essential, um, uh, strategic uh, uh, value uh, from analytics that are numbers generated, data generated, um, uh, strategy on both sides on the product value chain, uh, mm -hmm. how did we disrupt the existing value chains in New Zealand and make those more efficient in a stage-wise fashion that mitigates risk. All of these things mm -hmm. can only happen with collaboration. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I've got here a, a question around the biggest challenges. And, and I think as a country, we refer climate change and biodiversity challenges in the, in the context of challenges, in the context of challenges around this change. So two things I would, if you, if you could touch on, there is one, what do you see as the biggest challenges? in that transition to a circular bioeconomy, part one. But I think what, what I saw with people that they respond extremely well to is when you speak opportunities. So there's one is one comes with the other. So if you could reflect on the two two sides of that coin. Yeah, that's, that's a tricky question, a great question. Um, so circularity and the circular bioeconomy is a means to an end. Um, and you know the World Economic Forum, they have the, I think the most referred to definition of the circular bioeconomy, and it has to do with prosperity for all. It has to do with um, biodiversity more broadly than just GHG emissions and things like that. Uh, so it has really a, a very broad uh, definition that has latched onto this enhanced definition of circular economy to circular bioeconomy. And I think that's how you have to see the circular bioeconomy it's perfect as a mission, the good for all, mm -hmm. and at the same time, better exploitation of our biomass, and how do we do that fast? Yeah. So these are, uh, you know, that's a, a multidisciplinary yeah. problem. Uh, so if we see circularity as a means to an end, and bioeconomy is the vehicle to get there, you have a tremendous opportunity. 
what's the right route? Is it biofuels? Is it biomaterials? Is it a big volume? Is it a little volume? Is it all of those things? Where does New Zealand have their competitive advantage? And then as a second goal, how do we catalyze the right conditions mm -hmm. for especially that first uh, bioeconomy value chain? Mm -hmm. uh, this is a business technical innovation problem uh, and I think it's a great challenge. There's yeah. nothing hard about it. Uh, well, there's a lot hard about it, but that's uh, that's a great thing to do. And Kiwis are nice. They get along well with each other. They collaborate. So wouldn't it be great? And I keep saying this uh, in Canada too, because Canadians are okay. Um, we should all get together. Yeah. Government, the Maori, uh, Scion, and industry, we should mm -hmm. all get in the same room and um, uh, and we should look for solutions because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Yes, ab absolutely. Um, and I think what, what you touched on there is really this, this system system approach, the system thinking, the, the time where it was in, in, in silos, in sector silos, in isolation, <coughs> that's, truly, that's truly past us. So I've got two more questions. Um, the first one is not doing anything is not a solution. So there is this, this perception by you avoid risk by sitting back, stepping back and waiting and seeing what happened. So if we don't do what we talked about, what's at stake for New Zealand if we do not shift, if we do not transition? So doing nothing is, um, uh, is a very plausible outcome uh, for the ultimate risk taker, which is industry, right? And so, you know, really there's two paradigms. One is for the people from the government, research-oriented activities. And the other one is uh, also noble. It's industries investing and taking risk to serve their shareholders. Mm -hmm. So uh, when we look at the bioeconomy, we work with companies, the ones who are mm -hmm. going to do that investment. You know, they come in hoping to make a profit for their shareholders and they leave being really concerned about risk. Mm -hmm. And that's why do nothing is a great option. Mm -hmm. Because if you're more worried about risk, that's, mm -hmm. that's the route you're gonna take. Now, in the case of New Zealand, as in the case of Canada, which has a more established conventional industry, doesn't have big dollars mm -hmm. to invest, you're looking down the barrel of a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, because, um, there aren't as many options there for you. You can't wait to the last minute and then invest. Mm -hmm. You have to start now and you have to get going now yeah. and be proactive in order to succeed and create competitive mm -hmm. advantage. So doing nothing is not an option and it's worse than that. It could probably be delayed. Yeah. Uh, and um, But looking down the barrel of a gun is um, the mother of invention in some ways, isn't yeah. it? So mm -hmm. uh, that's okay, but you need to talk about it. You need to say doing nothing is not, a, is not an option. Absolutely. Yeah. The last question I have, and it's more on a, on a personal note, I think one of the great things being, being a scientist is you can travel the world, you have people you know all across the world, so there's always a very personal part of, of doing science. And, and one thing I think I missed most around COVID was the personal engagement. So you spent time here with us, you worked extremely hard, you were on a sabbatical after all, but you worked extremely hard. On a personal note, what, what did you enjoy? What, how was it for you being here as Paul, not the, not the engineer, not Paul the, the consultant, but Paul the, the person? Ah, oh, there's a long list. Um, uh, well, um, I, I'm a, an adopted Kiwi now, I think. Uh, yes. I've, uh, I, my answer to that question is, what's there not to love? So uh, we saw the North Island and the South Island, uh, and New Zealand's amazing. Uh, we fell in love with all the laid-back Kiwis um, that we met uh, without exception that love life, uh, have a good work-life balance, uh, all these amazing things. And Cyan, uh, really, it has a special environment. And when you're in an environment, sometimes you don't appreciate it because you're there every day. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you on a benchmark basis uh, uh, with uh, other research environments, you have a really great thing going here at Cyan. And it was nothing but a pleasure to work hard for such a, an environment so thank you thank you for the chance to do that uh, Florian. fantastic paul thank you very much good luck safe yes. travels i'll be back and uh, we won't put someone on the disc because it won't be long until you yeah that would be great fantastic thanks bye Florian.